So let's take a look at the rest of the meta that we didn't talk about in part one, starting with the leads. Okay, so aside from Starmie, here are other common leads in OU. We're gonna start with Alec Zam. This is the standard Zam, Psychic Recover, Thunder Wave, Seismic Toss. Uh, seismic Toss to uh, put damage onto other Psychic types, presumably. Uh, Alec Zam as a lead, serves a similar function as Starmie, but without the ice resistance. However, he compensates with uh, his lack of ice resistance with his enormous special. He has the second highest special in the game, second only to Mewtwo, which is uh, obviously ridiculous, right? So uh, Alakazam also has a very fast speed, so he can sleep fast and he can absorb special attacks while he's sleeping. And then when he wakes up, he can pop off a recover, rinse and repeat on that. So Alakazam is similar to Starmie in the sense that he has a high chance to wake up uh, later in the match. Additionally, um, he can spam psychics at opponents. And his psychic is really, really strong. He can bind uh, psychic special drops with the second highest special in the game, it really starts to add up. So staying in on Alakazam, even with a Chansey or a Jinx or an Executor, um, it can be a little risky, you know? And, and if you stay in, it kind of signals your opponent that you're going to stay in and you, you're at risk of uh, being hit with a Thunder Wave as well. So Alakazam is a very offensive Pokemon. And if your opponent chooses to not put you to sleep, they're gonna be in for an uphill battle uh, taking down Alakazam, especially with those special drops. Okay, so let's take a look at the next one. <laughs> uh, Chansey. Yeah, Chansey's not a very common, I haven't seen a whole lot of Chanseys lately, but uh, here's the idea behind Chansey. I named it Line Cutter because what do people like to do when they see an Alakazam or a Starmie lead? They like to throw their Chansey right in to eat the Thunder Wave. So it's like, why not just cut the line and start with Chansey if you're seeing a whole lot of Alakazam or uh, Starmie leads, you can you can skip a step and start with your Sing Chansey right off the bat. Um, and that is lead Chansey is, you know, you're gonna be running the Sing obviously, so you can have more chances to land that Sing. So this one isn't too dissimilar from the one we spoke about uh, in part one. All right, standard Gengar. Gengar probably needs no introduction as a lead. He is the fastest sleeper in the OU meta. So he can uh, pop off that hypnosis really fast. The only drawback being hypnosis is 60% accurate. So uh, Gengar can beat Jinx. Uh, he can get the drop on Jinx for the sleep, but he has a higher, higher probability of missing. Uh, let's take a look at this set here. Yeah, hypnosis, Mega Drain, Thunderbolt, Explosion. I'd say this is the standard Gengar set. Uh, Thunderbolt is uh, probably his best special attack. Um, because it can uh, hit waters and you know you, you need some thunderbolt for the water coverage in OU. Psychic isn't as good because you know there's a lot of psychic Pokemon that could that could uh, block it. Uh, Mega Drain for Rhydon, so you could try to catch a Rhydon on the switch or put some damage into Rhydon before it inevitably kills you. And then explosion, because who doesn't like explosion? You know, you can explode on something. You might you might even be able to get a critical hit with Gengar's fast speed, a critical explosion on something. So this is the pretty standard Gengar set, right? <laughs> All right, we have Jolteon. Uh, people sometimes lead Jolteon. Like, I get it, I understand. Jolteon's really fast, but I think it's stupid. This is why I mean like uh, Jolteon's stupid is because I think showing your electric type is one of the dumbest things you can do in OU with the prevalence of Rhydon and sometimes Golem, but mostly right on. So it's like, hey, want to give your opponent an immediate advantage by showing off your Jolteon at the start of the game. Now, there is some method to madness here, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend using Jolteon as a lead. You know, I, I understand what people are going for. They want to scare things out on turn one because Jolteon has uh, the fastest free Thunder Wave in the game with 358 speed. Well, aside from Electrode, but no one really uses Electrode. So <clears throat> and there's another thing here. There, here, here is a great uh, tip, a great technique, a great strategy, strategy how you want to call it. Um, 
what they're going for with Jolteon lead. You shouldn't use Jolteon as a lead for this, but uh, using the following technique is something I would recommend. So if you're in, if you're in a situation where you're faced with uh, imminent sleep, like you can't escape being slept, switching your electric type. Throw in your electric type to eat the sleep because your electric has the highest chance of being useless during that match. Uh, it's something I, I learned in random battles because uh, the prevalence of throwing in your electric type too early and it's like your opponent has a Nidoking or a Doug, you know, they have a ground type waiting for you. So if, if you need something to get put to sleep, throw in your electric early and hopefully your electric eats that sleep. It's gonna suck if it doesn't because now your opponent uh, knows you have an electric, but if they sleep your electric, it's like, oh, well, that's not too bad because there's a high chance that you could have had a ride on and this could have been useless anyway, right? And then Jolteon can sleep it off the fastest. So that's the idea behind uh, lead Jolteon, but don't lead Jolteon. If you need to throw him in to eat a sleep, do that instead, all right. Jinx, everyone knows Jinx. Jinx has the most reliable uh, sleep move. Sleep move, lovely kiss. Let me see, 75, what's sleep powder? Is it 70? No, it's 75 also. But uh, Jinx is faster. So that makes Jinx the most reliable sleeper in the meta is because Jinx has uh, 288 speed, 75% accurate, lovely kiss, right? And Jinx also has a lot of utility outside of being a sleeper. Jinx can't be frozen, it's part psychic. So it can eat psychics and uh, it can eat ice types, eat, eat ice type attacks as well. So you could uh, run rest on Jinx and uh, heal yourself pretty reliably with a Jinx. Uh, Jinx is good to fight Chansey with because there's often a freeze war happening and Jinx can't get frozen. And if you plan on engaging in a freeze war, you could always sub uh, Blizzard with Ice Beam so you have more chances to freeze. But Blizzard on Jinx is quite strong. Okay, so that's the standard Jinx set. I think that's probably the most common Jinx set. And then we go to Executor. Uh, some people lead Executor to counter uh, Starmie and Alakazam leads. Because even, I mean, Blizzard, Starmie, has to crit the blizzard to even put like half damage onto you. So they want to, again, cut the line, predict the Alakazam or, or Starmie lead. So they'll lead Executor with the Sleep Powder. And this is, I, I'd say this is the standard Executor set to Sleep Powder, Stun Spore, Psychic, and Explosion. I mean, everyone loves Explosion on Executor because it's like, you don't know when it's coming. You can make your opponent dance by throwing in your executor and scaring them and making you think, making them think your executor is going to explode. And then you, it's like, nope, you could do a stun spore. You can hit them with psychic a few times and then explode. Who knows? So executor is an excellent Pokemon. And I think executor used to be uh, the spot for big four before uh, being surpassed by Starmie in usage. Okay. So those are the leads, and that's the pretty common lead meta game. And the leads, it's kind of like a rock, paper, scissors game with the leads. You don't know uh, what your opponent's lead going, lead's going to be, so you're always taking a gamble, uh, throwing out something first, and then there's always something that could beat what you throw out first, so you never know. So let's say it's like you throw out Alakazam, and then your opponent throws out a Chansey. It's like, dang it, your opponent gets the drop on you because they threw out a Chansey, or like, you throw out a Chansey and your opponent throws out a, J a Jinx and it's like, dang it, right? Or you throw out a Jinx and your opponent throws out a Gengar and you're like, dang it. <laughs> nothing, nothing you can really do. Um, Gengar does have the fastest sleep, but again, it's unreliable. So if your opponent throws out an Alakazam, that Alakazam has a high chance of one-shotting you with its crit rate if you miss. So um, Gengar lead, it's always kind of iffy. Like, I'd say Gengar Lee is, is less reliable than Starmie in some senses because Starmie has a better chance of uh, sleeping off that, that status. Okay, so let's go into the rest of the meta. Starting with Alec Zam again. Uh, this is what I call endgame Zam, and we're subbing out Seismic Toss 
for reflect. And this makes Alakazam an obnoxious, obnoxious tank. You can see me utilize Endgame Zam during my 1500 video on OU. Uh, but I think this Alakazam has the best utility toward the end of the game in the team structure uh, because your opponent likely has some physical attackers left. And Alakazam is just really fast and it has a really punishing uh, special stat. So you can throw up that reflect, throw up that thunder wave. And now you're really hard to kill and you have a really strong offense as well. So this can make your opponent's life hell at the end of the game with the end game Zam. Tank Chansey, uh, not too dissimilar from end game Zam, you're uh, subbing down a move slot for Reflect, right? And I would uh, recommend uh, Seismic Toss on Tank Chansey just because most people understandably don't want to sacrifice Thunder Wave on their Chansey because it can Thunder Wave the opponent. And then you get Thunder Wave, you, you have a better chance of healing yourself with Soft Boil uh, repeatedly. So I'd say Soft Boil and Thunder Wave are staples on Chansey, and people don't really want to never not run these moves. So Tank Chansey, you can put, throw up a Reflect to cover your physical weakness and just become very hard to kill as well. And then Seismic Toss usually deals consistent damage. But you need to be careful because uh, seismic toss is pretty weak. So you don't want to get yourself into a situation where you're going to run out of seismic toss before killing your opponent. All right, Bolt Beam Chansey. Another common Chansey is a uh, Ice Beam Thunderbolt, Thunder Wave, Soft Boiled. So you get, you get this is a Starmie Punisher right here. Uh, Starmie can't really do anything against chancy in general and you throw a thunderbolt on it and now you have a water type punishing chancy and just a coverage uh chancy in general so taking a look at chancy and many of the other pokemon on this list i mean i didn't want to make a set for every single pokemon but counter you can always run counter on a lot of these pokemon jinx chancy alexan maybe um the risk you run with counter is at the higher difficulties your opponents are going to check for counter uh, you, they're not going to fall for counter so easily, but uh, with, combined with Chansey's massive, massive HP, uh, hitting a counter off of Chansey almost guarantees a one-hit kill on almost anything in the meta if, they, if they're dumb enough to hit you with a physical attack off the fly. <clears throat> so you could, of course, you know, interchange counter in a lot of these move sets, including the one we looked at um, before. Uh, you, could, you could have a spot for a surprise counter. I'm not going to put make make a counter set on every single Pokemon that's able to use counter just because it's like counter is one of those moves that you work into your move set. You don't really necessarily build around it. <clears throat> it's just something good to have and it take up a lot of unnecessary space. So counter chancy elf probably doesn't need any, any introduction because I'm sure uh, everyone watching this video has been countered by a chancy once and thrown their computer across the room. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Cloister time. Cloister's job is to make Snorlax's life a living hell. Uh, people love, love, love to hard switch into Cloister when a Snorlax is on the field because Snorlax really has a lot of trouble killing the Cloister. Mm. Excuse me. Yeah, so Cloyster's job is to eat uh, physical attacks. And let's take a look at this move set here. Uh, Blizzard, Clamp, Explosion, Rest. I'd say this is the standard Cloyster. And with Rest, you can, you, you can just keep on sleeping in a physical Snorlax's face with Rest because Cloyster has a humongous, humongous defense. 458, that's absurd. That's a higher stat than Mewtwo special. So by far the uh, highest defense in the game for a Pokemon. Right. And uh, let's take a, let's talk about Clamp for a minute. Why Clamp and not Surf? Even though Clamp is really inaccurate, 75% uh, accuracy, it's a trapping move, right? So trapping moves in red, blue, yellow are hilariously broken. So if you hit your opponent with a trapping move, there's a technique you could do called pivoting in which uh, if, if your opponent doesn't switch out of your trap and then you do, your opponent loses a turn. It, it'll say uh, they're trapped and can't move. Uh, the opponent's Pokemon will get stuck. So not only can you use uh, trapping moves to 
uh, repeatedly hit a slower opponent. I mean, a slower opponent won't be able to hit you back if you keep on landing a trapping move on them. So let's say you have a Cloyster versus a weakened Snorlax. You can keep clamping that weakened Snorlax as long as you don't miss, and the Snorlax can't do anything about it. You can clamp him to death, right? And if, if um, you can't clamp him to death, you, all you have to do is land a clamp and then switch into something faster, and your opponent can't do anything about that either. So that's called pivoting when you use your trapping move to uh, switch into something else and you make your opponent lose their attacking turn on the switch. And that's why trapping moves in red, blue, yellow are so uh, excellent. And then of course, explosion, because again, who doesn't like explosion? Explosion is a, a great attack to have on anything. So, you know, you can take down a chance of your Alakazam or something obnoxious if you need to. Blizzard, stab Blizzard with the ice, uh, beautiful. You outspeed Executor with Cloyster, so you can you know, deliver that ice. But Cloyster's main utility is against uh, physical attackers. Um, if you want to use it against the Tauros, you better make dang sure your opponent isn't a genius and is running Blizzard instead of Thunderbolt, you know, because it's always a gamble throwing in a uh, Cloyster on a Tauros. But you can stay off a of Tauros if uh, it doesn't have Thunderbolt. Okay, Executor. This is the Executor I like to use. Uh, we already spoke about the standard Executor. Uh, I use this Executor, and people may think, wow, what a weird Executor, but you would be surprised how much this Executor works for me. So we have Mega Drain, Psychic, Stun Spore, and Rest, right? And we'll talk about this weird move set in a minute. However, we do need to take note of Executor's excellent stats all around. I mean, 348 special, that's really impressive. Executor is really bulky as well, 393 HP. Uh, Executor is a solid defense as well as a solid offense, right? So e Executor uh, combined with the typing, don't forget the typing. So you have Grass, Psychic, so you have a lot of resistance here, especially uh, to eat up uh, Psychic type attacks from other Pokemon. Uh, you can use Executor as a shuffler, which is what I commonly do a lot because this four, 348 special combined with the psychic, you know, and this grass, it's it's a great defensive Pokemon uh, with the grass typing. Rhydon has a lot of trouble with Executor. So you can switch Rhydon in, uh, you could switch Executor into a Rhydon earthquake and eat it up pretty well. And Rhydon has, has a hard time killing Executor uh, with Rock Slide and Body Slam. And that's where this set kind of comes into play here. So never underestimate Rest Executor. Uh, Rest Executor is an excellent option because most of your opponents are going to expect explosion on Executor. So if you get down to low health, they're going to start getting panicky, right? They're going to be like, oh God, it's time to switch because this Executor is going to explode. Nope, I just healed myself. I just healed myself instead of exploding. You gave me a free sleep turn potentially, or you know I could switch out into something else and I have a reusable executor. Why stun spore instead of sleep powder? Why is there no sleep powder on here? Well, my logic is that Chansey does a fine job as a sleeper already and I don't feel the need to have uh, two sleeping moves on my team. So I sub out sleep powder for stun spore so I can start spreading that paralysis uh, very well. And Mega Drain, people are like, oh God, Mega Drain's a weak move. Why would you ever use Mega Drain? Here's why. So if there is a Starmie and that Starmie is paralyzed, Executor has a chance of winning that matchup with Mega Drain, right? So if you have a paralyzed Starmie in front of you, you could beat that Starmie by just spamming Mega Drain at it, right? You could waste that Starmie's time and you could even, you know, you can kill it. And if the Starmie wants to stay in, you could always fire off a Psychic in between because you're always gonna have more health than that Starmie. So you fire off a Psychic, you get a drop and then you Mega Drain again. And then now you, now you have a really high chance of winning against that Starmie. So I use Executor against Starmies as well uh, Executor could potentially finish off a slow bro, you know, Executor could catch a cloister on the switch. Executor could uh, one shot right on, you know, don't sleep on Mega Drain. Mega Drain 
has some utility on executor because mostly opponents opponents don't expect it. So this is my executor and you are welcome to yank it and use it for yourself, try it out, right? Okay. We're gonna take, take a look at my Gengar. Uh, people sleep on Gengar as uh, a standalone Pokemon. People want to almost exclusively use Gengar as a lead and as an exploder. Well, Gengar has a lot of utility outside of those functions. So this is the Gengar I use when I'm not using Gengar as a lead. And I would recommend using this Gengar toward the end of the match uh, because Gengar does have some vulnerabilities to ground and psychic type attacks, right? So, and also if you save him toward the end of the match, you, you can get a free switch in on the opponent's explosion. If the opponent thinks you're not running a Gengar, and if you don't run a Gengar early on, there's a high chance that they're going to think that you don't have one, and they're safe. Like, oh, okay, I can explode now. There's no Gengar because he would have shown me his Gengar earlier in the match. Well, save this Gengar for a little later, right? Because you're you want your, to get your opponent comfortable, and then when they're when they're ready to explode, you can switch this in and just completely demoralize them. There's nothing more demoralizing than exploding on a Gengar of all things. Exploding on a Gengar is worse than exploding on a Rhydon. So this, this Gengar is for demoralization purposes and he does a pristine job at it, right? So this Gengar has confused red. Don't, as I said before, I believe Chansey does a fine job as the main line sleeper on your team. So don't waste a move slot on an inaccurate crappy move that you might not even use like hypnosis, right? Gengar, uh, you, you run Confuse Ray. Just trust me on it, run Confuse Ray. Your opponents hate Confuse Ray. You can cause them so much distress by uh, running that Confuse Ray. And let's take a look at the uh, second best move on it, Rest. This is why I say, uh, save it for the end game. The Gengar, Gengar's secondary utility is providing a wall to the standard Snorlax, who is going to be running Body Slam and Ice Beam. That Snorlax is going to have a hell of a time taking down Gengar. So, and also Gengar has the third highest special in the game at 358 and high special in the game. So Gengar can even survive psychics and whatnot. So uh, he, he, he's still a very strong Pokemon despite having some vulnerabilities. He's very strong. And I, I have rested against opponents and uh, parafused opponents as well. Never underestimate the power of parafusion. Uh, you may have seen one of my earlier videos where I utilize a parafusion nine tails of all things. Well, imagine a parafusion Gengar. That's going to suck for your opponent. Uh, these last two moves, I would recommend them. Um, you could try Nightshade if you're afraid of Executor because these two moves can't hit Executor too well, but I would still recommend these because Psychic is going to get the special drops on Snorlax. Psychic is going to get, you know, more special drops and Thunderbolt again for the prevalence of water types. You could also get a special drop and then fire off a Thunderbolt to, uh, you know, increase your damage output on Gengar. But uh, this, this is a uh, standalone Gengar is what I would call him. You're not using him for a cheap sleep or a cheap explosion. You're really trying to utilize him to the best of his ability. And I've had a lot of success with this. So I would highly, highly re recommend using this one in the back of your team. All right, here is an offensive Jolteon aside from uh, our mainline Jolteon. And we didn't really talk about mainline Jolteon, did we? Let's go, take, let's go back and take a look at standard Jolteon really quick. So, Outside of being a lead, the uh, standard Jolteon's move set. Okay, Thunderbolt, Thunder Wave. Obviously, you already know what these two do. Double Kick and Rest. Double Kick is for a Paralyzed Chansey. Uh, there's a high chance that you can kill a Paralyzed Chansey using Jolteon's Double Kick and combining it with his Crit Rate. And then Rest. Um, Jolteon does have a pretty high, uh, pretty high special attack, and along with his speed stat, he, he could probably uh, rest. And uh, you can definitely, definitely uh, rest in on a Chansey because a Chansey has a hard time uh, killing Jolteon with her with her weak special moves. So you can you can rest on a Chansey and you can reuse this Jolteon later. And I'd say this is the standard Jolteon set right here. 
and let's go take a, take a look at the alternate Jolteon set. So the alternate Jolteon set is an offensive. It doesn't have any rest move. It has agility, so you can break out of your paralysis because there's no need to outspeed anything. You just want to break out of your paralysis and uh, get more hits on opponents. And then we have pin missile instead of rest. You know, agility instead of thunder wave, pin missile instead of rest. Pin missile is uh, for executor. You could potentially kill an executor by getting a critical pin missile with a lot of, uh... oh gosh, excuse me, with a lot of uh, repeated, if you get lucky and you get like four or five hits, you could kill or finish off an executor with pin missile. So this Jolteon is, uh, you know, you're, you're subbing your rest for grass type coverage, essentially. Executor and Victory Bell are uh, gonna hate this. Uh, offensive Jinx. Jinx doesn't necessarily need to run Lovely Kiss. Again, you know, you could kind of trick your opponent into thinking that you, you throw a jinx in and your opponent thinks, oh man, he's going to put me to sleep, but you just never do. So we're, we're subbing out lovely kiss for something else. And you could do seismic toss, you could do counter, you know, you, you could do even body slam if you wanted to. Ice beam, psychic, rest, seismic toss. I mean, jinx is still a great standalone Pokemon outside of a sleeper. You know, you don't need to waste your jinx's potential uh, purely on sleeping. Right. Okay. Slow bro, our big, our big boy, slow bro. This is the standard slow bro. Uh, amnesia, surf, thunder wave, and rest. So uh, slow bro can tank its special up really, really high, and also have already has a really, really high defense and has uh, three eighteen defense with a lot of HP. So slow bro. It's just a monster. I don't know how else to say it. Slowbro is really hard to kill, right? and it's only downside is how slow it is. Imagine that. Imagine that Slowbro is slow. But um, this one's standard. You want to Thunder Wave your opponent, tank up huge surfs, you know, stab surf with the amnesia. I mean, it's brutal. You, know, you can take down Executor with this. But the important thing is your opponent is stunned. So you're able to constantly rest and hopefully they get uh, paralyzed on multiple turns and you can get your health back up. But you could team wipe with this slow bro if your opponent doesn't have a counter. Counters to watch out for on slow bro are fast electric type moves. So Starmie's Thunderbolt, Jolteon, Zapdos, and uh, Victory Bell is a hard answer to uh, slow bro because uh, you're always gonna crit with razor lead, right? So there are a few things you want to watch out for. You aren't invincible, Slowbro. And uh, I believe, let me think. Both being Chansey could wreak a little havoc on you, but you know you still have a good matchup against Chansey if you're tanked up and Chansey's paralyzed. You can still take down a Chansey, right? Okay. So this is a different kind of Slowbro. There was a player named Link once. He's a great guy. You know, we're still friends on Showdown. But he beat me three times in a row with this slow bro, which subbed out Thunder Wave for Reflect on its already massive defense. So I couldn't take it down with a Snorlax. I couldn't take it down with a Tauros. And he just kept getting away with it. We can't let him keep getting away with it. But he kept getting away with it. And this is what inevitably pushed me to run more electrics and victory bell because I kept on meeting Link on ladder and getting team wiped. I mean, this slow bro would destroy my entire team. I was just in, I was in shock. I was in disbelief that I was al allowing this to happen to me. So similar to the last slow bro, but with reflect. So this slow bro is like a super tank. That's why I named it Giga Bro. It's just ridiculous. It's probably the strongest Pokemon in OU after its, after its boosts. And that's why I name all my slow bros Link in, in honor of Link. Uh, kicking the crap out of me repeatedly with this slow bro. So if you want to make your opponent's life, you know, miserable, you could try this out mid game toward the end of the game. And man, end game giga bro. <laughs> Whew. Good luck. All right. Some Snorlax variations. 
This is the attacking Snorlax. This is all out attacking Snorlax, and this is more prevalent in Ubers than OU. Um, I wouldn't recommend using the Snorlax as, as your queen or a mid game Snorlax because it can't heal itself. And uh, if your opponent still has a Snorlax, there's a high chance that Snorlax is going to be running Reflect, and this attack wax isn't going to be able to really do anything against it. So I would save the Snorlax for the end game when there are some barriers removed. Or, you know, just when there's barriers removed and you can really get some utility out of his attacking moves. I mean, Hyper Beam is, is momentous on Snorlax. And of course, uh, Stab, Self-Destruct, just, just, I mean, it lives up to his name. It's destructive. It's you know, very, very strong. And there's also some variation you can do with Snorlax. Uh, you know, maybe you could, I, I ran a weird one once where it was uh, exploding Snorlax, but with Reflect. So that was kind of a trick Snorlax and make your opponent think you're going to stick around and then you blow up on them. Um, but yeah, this is the attacking Snorlax. Then we have special Snorlax. Uh, I'd say this one is used the least and you can capitalize on that because people, you know, don't really expect special Snorlax. So. You can eat psychics on this, and the most common way people try to take down Snorlax is by uh, getting special drops on it. So you put in the Snorlax, you do Amnesia, and uh, this one has a leg up against Cloister. Cloister, right? This is a Cloister killer. People are going to throw in their Cloister. Surprise, you have Amnesia Thunderbolt. What? Cloister's dead now? That's crazy. So this one has a lot of utility, I would say. Um, I think you need to pick your moment, but after you do, it, uh, you get those stat boosts. It's, it's going to be a bad time for your opponent. So uh, I'd recommend running special Snorlax on your team and, you know, maybe team building around special Snorlax because I think that's going to have a high element of surprise on the OU ladder just because people don't really use it, but it has, you know, great uses. All right. Counter Snorlax, Count Lax. This Snorlax is used to kill another Snorlax, and it's also not seen too much anymore. I mean, it, it comes in waves, I feel like, because one person will use Count Lax, and then someone will say, oh, man, that, that was great. That was a great idea. I'm going to run my own Count Lax. And then suddenly everyone's running Count Lax, right? And I think we're in a we're in a low period, and when I have I haven't seen a whole lot of counter Snorlaxes. So counter Snorlax is used to kill another Snorlax. And, you know the other Snorlax is going to body slam you. Boom! You counter it, and now that Snorlax is dead or almost dead. And then you have the other two moves. You need Earthquake to hit Gengar because if you are running like Hyper Beam or Self Destruct, you have no chance of hitting Gengar, right? And also you can avoid counter with Earthquake on a Chansey. So that's Earth, Earthquake's utility on Snorlax. So counter Snorlax would recommend it uh, if you are constantly getting in Snorlax wars and you want to surprise your opponent, you could throw off a body slam to trick them in thinking that you aren't going to use counter right away. And I wouldn't use counter right away because you don't want the opponent's Snorlax to live. So body slam, body slam, and then counter and, you know, kill your opponent's Snorlax. Or, you know, Tauros, people want to hit it with a Tauros too, counter that, counter that Tauros and kill it. And again, Snorlax, I think, has the second highest HP in the game, uh, barring Chansey. So that's going to be a strong, strong counter. You know, third, Wiggly, Wiggly Tough, right? Wiggly Tough has a huge HP, but people don't really use Wiggly Tough. Uh, this one's a trick Starmie, and it's a little controversial, but I have, I think I've lost to a Starmie like this before. Um, this Starmie is kind of an endgame Starmie, and it doesn't have, recover and people are like oh well why would you ever run a star me without recover dude but i i think my best guess is your your opponents think you have recover so they're gonna start getting worried maybe pressure themselves into switching into something unnecessarily and then you have great great coverage on almost everything in the game with blizzard psychic and thunderbolt so you can really do a lot of damage with the star me and of course thunder wave I mean, who doesn't like thunder wave you know paralyzing things so your opponent it's called trick star me your opponent thinks that you have recovered but you don't you just have these these moves here so they're going to be they might start feeling comfortable let's say you reveal two out of these three moves and then your opponent's like oh dude of course 
they only have a uh, uh, blizzard and psychic, so they can't do anything against my star me, and they're throwing their star me. Surprise, I have thunderbolt, idiot. You got tricked, or you know, another way around psychic and thunderbolt. And they're like, Oh, dude, this star me doesn't have blizzard, I can finish him with executor. And they throw an executor, boom, you have blizzard, psych, psych, dude. So, this is a one trick pony right here. This is called trick star me, and uh, if you're feeling a little spicy, you could run it. You know, there's probably going to be some discordance. Like, oh, you, you would never not run recover on Stormy. Well, you know, I've won with some crazy things. Never underestimate the uh, power of surprise. And right next to Trick Stormy, we have Trick Tauros, which has won me games. I, sh I crap you not. Trick Tauros has won me games because at the higher levels, your opponent is always thinking about that hyper beam off the Tauros, right? Your opponent is always waiting for a juicy opportunity to switch into your Tauros's hyper beam. And at higher level, higher level, blah, blah, higher level players can predict that hyper beam a mile away. They're going to see that. They're going to see that coming. They know you want a hyper beam when your Pokemon is weak to a Tauros. So they're going to switch into something advantageous to them, right? Well, guess what? At the higher levels, let's go ahead and take off Hyper Beam because your opponent is going to start psyching themselves out, thinking that Hyper Beam is coming and then it never, ever does. So we're just going to keep spamming Body Slam on them because we literally don't have the temptation to even use Hyper Beam. And then we have full coverage against everything else. So we have Gengar coverage. We have uh, Cloister coverage, we have Rhydon coverage, we have full coverage, and your opponent would never see it coming because they think, you know, oh, why would you, why would you not run Hyper Beam on Tauros? Well, because everyone expects it, right? So this is Trick Tauros, and I've, I've won high-level games with Trick Tauros because my opponent started freaking out. They started freaking out thinking the Hyper Beam was coming, like, oh, dude, he's going to Hyper Beam me, and they'd switch into something that I already knew that they had, and I would use the corresponding move to kill that thing, right? Oh, dude, here comes the Hyper Beam, switching to Cloister, pfft, Thunderbolt, psych. And so I already showed like Blizzard, Earthquake. And he's like, oh, so this has to be Hyper Beam. Nope, Thunderbolt, you're dead now. So that's that's Trick Tauros. All right, Lapras. Probably the OE Pokemon I have used the least in my, in my career. Uh, Lapras is like a special Snorlax. Lapras has, you know, a lot of HP. It's very bulky and it has a good special stat. So Lapras is kind of like Snorlax, but on the special side instead of the physical side. So it has a lot of uh, staying power, right? So here is the set that I use on Lapras, but Lapras really has a lot of diversity. I mean, Lapras is the only other Poke water type Pokemon that can use electric type moves, barring Thunder Wave. But uh, Lapras has a very diverse move set. Lapras also has Sing and Confuse Ray, two great uh, utility moves on Lapras. So this one, uh, I don't don't run a water type move on Lapras. That is such a waste because Blizzard has 90 accuracy, 120 base power, along with Ice Stab. There's no reason for you to run Surf on Lapras. None. Uh, Blizzard gets the job done, and then Thunderbolt for other water type Pokemon. And Lapras has a better matchup against water types than other water types. Uh, because of its massive staying power by comparison. So you're going to want to use the Thunderbolt against other water types. So Blizzard and Thunderbolt are pretty good. Body Slam for Paralyzed Chansey hopefully doesn't have, it, have counter on it, right? So you could Body Slam a Chansey to death potentially, and Chansey's not going to be able to kill Lapras. Even Bolt Beam Chansey can't kill Lapras. And that's I think that's really Lapras' selling point is that uh, it has it has uh, options against Chansey, right? Chansey with Thunderbolt can't kill Lapras, and that's huge. That says a lot about Lapras's staying power. And then rest, you know, of course, rest because you, why wouldn't you have rest? It's it's the uh, water Snorlax. Of course, you're going to have rest on Lapras, right? But any any of these moves are pretty interchangeable. Maybe aside from Blizzard. Um, there's a lot you can do with Lapras, and that makes Lapras very appealing. Uh, Confuse Ray, Body Slam on the Chansey can give you a higher chance of killing Chansey. And then Sing, maybe catch your opponent off guard. Maybe you want to run a Bolt Beam Chansey and put your sleep on something else, and you have kind of a team built around Lapras. 
you could run sing on Lapras to really surprise your opponent. I never expect to sing Lapras, never do. You know, whenever my opponent throws out a Lapras, I'm like, okay, well, you know, Sing's really inaccurate, so he's probably not going to use Sing. Why would you use Sing on Lapras? Boom, uses Sing. I'm like, what the hell? Can't believe it. So that's a surprise factor on Lapras. <clears throat> Last but not least, we have Victory Bell. Underrated OU Pokemon. Victory Bell is an amazing, amazing endgame Pokemon, or even mid-game Pokemon. Don't sleep on Victory Bell. Executor isn't the only grass type. Victory Bell is an amazing Pokemon uh, because of it. Why do I have some power quest? My bad. Because of the move Rap, right? Best trappy move in the game, Rap. 85% accurate and uh, 32 PP. So Rap is the best trappy move in the game, which is uh, Victory Bell's key selling point. And that's why Victory Bell is such a good Pokemon because uh, the OU meta has a reputation for being slow. There's a lot of slow-ass Pokemon in the OU meta, and one of the alternative strategies to beating OU teams is to double down on trapping. Uh, there's a player named Snabs, very high-level player, very unorthodox OU team, and I, I just wish I was there for all the people playing him thinking that he sucks or that his team is a joke because they're not, you know, standard, and then he destroys them. I mean, the guy got 1,500 with this team. It was, it was hilarious. He destroys them by doubling down on rapping and trapping, you know, fire spin, clamp, rap, bind, ridiculous. So don't underestimate the power of trapping, and that's what makes Victory Bell such a great Pokemon. So this is the Victory Bell I used in my first video. Um, I have Sleep Powder on this one because I was running a no big three, so I didn't have Chansey, and I didn't have Snorlax or Poros either, and I was, uh, I was racking up a lot of wins, a lot of wins with this team, and I'd say Victory Bell played a key role on that team at, in, during the mid-game with the Wrap and Sleep Powder. So uh, if you're running a normalish team, you could free up a move slot on Chansey and uh, save Sleep for later. You can maybe run a bolt beam chancy or a counter chancy or whatever and have sleep powder on it, but you don't have to run sleep powder. Uh, the move that you do have to run is wrap. You always want to run wrap on Victory Bell. Victory Bell has 238 speed, so it can outspeed most of the uh, slow meta type Pokemon. And you want to use it toward the end when you spread paralysis on your opponent's team so that you can uh, just keep torturing them with wrap, right? And uh, I run Body Slam. Instead of, uh, you know, you could run Hyper Beam, you could run Stun Spore, you could run Stun Spore instead of Sleep Powder. I wouldn't recommend Stun Spore, though, because you're wasting a turn, and you don't want your Victory Bell to ever, ever get paralyzed. You want to keep your Victory Bell clean. You don't want to let it get paralyzed, because that's going to that's gonna screw up your wrap technique, right? And I think you always want to be running Razor Leaf as well, because you want that critical stab move, and it's going to be able to take down Cloister, Starmie, and Slowbro, most importantly. And um, yeah, I run Body Slam. You could run Double Edge. You could run Hyper Beam here. This move is mostly for finishing off your opponent after you severely weaken them with Wrap. Uh, or you could you could sub out Sleep Powder too. You can have Body Slam, Hyper Beam. You know, uh, there's a lot of utility you could do with Victory Bell. Again, I wouldn't recommend running Stun Spore because you're going to need a turn to pop it off, and there's a, there's a chance that you miss or that you're slower than your opponent, and then your Victory Bell gets paralyzed. You don't you don't want that to happen. So uh, the Victory Bell I use, if my opponent wants to switch around while I'm busy firing off Wrap, and let's say I'm done doing Wrap, like I'm on a good turn. I'll fire off a body slam first, and Victory Bell has great attack, 308 attack. So 308 attack on the body slam. Let's say you they switch an Alakazam or you know, Chansey, you can get a huge damage, damage boost from that. Boom, body slam. It maybe even get a free paralysis off of it, and then immediately go back into your wrap. It's it's great. So I'd highly recommend using Victory Bell on your team because you know a lot of uh new or mid-level players would never run Victory Bell because of its poison typing and they think Victory Bell is weak. Well, you're not using Victory Bell correctly. Victory Bell comes in later to uh, torture your opponent after you spread some paralysis around, you know, and 
I mean, really, really a deadly Pokemon. Don't sleep on it. Okay, so that was the uh, OU meta. I hope these explanations have given you lots of ideas for team building and how to use things. And uh, without, without further ado, or with further ado, goodbye.